from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering PagerDuty Summit 2019. Brought to you by PagerDuty. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are downtown San Francisco at the historic Western St. Francis at PagerDuty Summit. It's the fourth year of PagerDuty Summit, third year for theCUBE being here. I think they've about outgrown the venue. So we look forward to seeing where we go next year, but we're excited to have somebody who's had a very busy day, a lot of product announcements, leading a lot of this effort. And he's Jonathan Rendy, this SVP of product for PagerDuty. Jonathan, great to see you. Thanks for having me. So congratulations, a lot of, uh, a lot of product announcements today. This is our biggest unveiling of the year. Which, what, uh, so I don't want you to pick your favorite baby, but what are some of the highlights that, that, that you know, got us here today? Yeah, so a couple of big things, uh, today and tomorrow, not just today. Uh, first, we're really focused on applying, it is the buzzword of the, cent of the new millennium, machine learning, but we're applying it across our entire portfolio. And we're doing it in a good way, not in a creepy way. Uh, we're doing it in a good way to help organizations make sense of all the data they're getting, tell them what's happening, and more importantly, what they can do to get better. And so that's something that we call our intelligent dashboards as a part of our analytics product. So that's one big one. Right, right. Um, and as you probably know, being here, PagerDuty is all about helping teams be more effective in the moments that matter. And one of the other big announcements we have is uh, intelligent triage. And so what is that? Like, we see with, there's a lot of great companies here, partners that we're working with, and whenever they're working major issues within their companies where seconds matter, or even microseconds, they can lose millions of dollars, that work in real time, they'll find out that there's multiple teams working on the same problem only for one team to find out that somebody's undoing some of the things that they're doing. So we focused in a huge way on building a context, a visibility, so that the teams can see what other issues are related. That's what we call intelligent triage. So nobody needs to do double work. Right. It's funny on the, on the AI, right, and machine learning, because they are the hot, hot, hot buzzwords. But what I don't think are the hot buzzwords, which is where all the excitement is happening, is it's the applied AI. It's not AI for AI's sake, or we're a great AI company with an AI widget that we want to sell you. It's really leveraging AI within your core application space, your core domain expertise, to make your apps do better things. And that's really what you guys have embraced. Uh, absolutely. It's, we, we have to be so empathetic to our users. Our users carry an unbelievable burden. They are on the front lines when things go down. They have you know, minutes, seconds to make right decisions and there's a lot of responsibility with that. So we're using AI in an applied way to help them make sense of being just overloaded with information to focus them in on the things that can make the, the biggest positive impact. Right. And so it, it is applied AI in its purest form. And the other part I, I found interesting is really uh, an acknowledgement that it's not just the people that have to fix the problem that need to know about the problem. That there's a much larger, you know, kind of, eco, I don't want to say ecosystem, but ecosystem around that problem, whether it's sales reps, executives, yeah. customer service, there's a whole bunch of people that should know, need to know, have value to know beyond just the really smart person that I've now uh, put on fixing the problem. It, 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 you're bringing up a great point, which is a lot of people know PagerDuty because of how we help technical teams, developers and ops people fix these incidents when they happen, right? right? When a site goes down or when something, a search isn't working correctly. But getting work done, we're taking that in its broadest context. It's beyond the technical responders. First, we have to service them. They're our core audience and they're why we're here today. But that unit of work, getting work done, goes beyond them as you're saying. It goes to what we call business responders who I could be working in a customer service team. And while that incident is happening, I need that information so that I can ready my communication in case somebody calls up the support desk and opens up a ticket. I need to know what to tell them. Right. When it's going to be fixed and how we're addressing their problem. Or I could be the CFO, a stakeholder, and just want to know what's the real revenue impact of this outage at this time. So whether I'm taking action or I just need to know, these are people outside of the sphere of the technical team. And they're business responders and stakeholders, and we're automating the flow of information to all of them so that they don't 
interrupt the poor responder team so they can focus on their work. Right. Yeah. Another concept that was kind of clarified today is, is all of your guys' partnerships. Um, you know, you've listed on your integration page on the website, it's Clearwell, Datadog, Salesforce, Zendesk, Sumo, AWS, ServiceNow, Atlassian, IBM Bluemix. I mean, it's a, I can't go through the whole list. It's a huge list, but I think the confusion in the market or maybe clarification is, is, is helpful is, you know, kind of where do those systems play versus your system when they, everyone wants to be the system of record, right? Everybody wants to be the, the database that has all the, all the information. Yeah. And yet, you figured out a way to take your capabilities and augment all these other platforms and really puts you in a nice play across a, a really wide range of, of problem sets. Yeah, it's, it's so core to who we are. We like to think of our PagerDuty platform, I always refer to it as, it's a central nervous system. And, and what does that really mean? We always say it's a central nervous system and PagerDuty is about people. So all of those vendors, all of those companies, they're all valued partners. Many of them are customers of PagerDuty as well. They use us to keep their services up on the monitoring world. But what PagerDuty is always focused on is ensuring that people to people collaboration to get real work done based on the information coming from those folks. So a lot of those vendors out there they play such an invaluable part of the ecosystem. They let us know, they provide all the telemetry and the information and the data. We make sense of it and then engage people to finish that work. So in a way, you know, that central nervous system is taking all these impulses, just right, like right. a real central nervous system, and we're engaging the right people to help them effectively get the right, right. work done. And, and we couldn't do it without them. Right. So the, uh, the, the famous 350 plus, uh, we, we couldn't do what we do without them and they're all here today. You didn't think I was going to read the whole hunt 350 hopefully. <laughs> that would be a long list. <laughs> That'd be a long list. Yeah. Well, we, and we had Zendesk on and, and I know that was part of the, the new customer service yeah. announcement and getting you know, kind of your value kind of closer to the actual customer transaction. It's always in support of the customer transaction if the website's down a transaction can't close, but this actually is taking it to the next level to have a, a direct contact to the person who's actually engaged with the client to give them more insight as to what's going on as being resolved and these types of things with a two-way communication pattern. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something I'm personally really excited about. Uh, we're a customer of Zendesk as well. So we use Zendesk and they use PagerDuty. So we get a lot of feedback on what's working, what's not working, which informed us and in what we were doing. But there's two big problems in the industry that I've seen over you know, two plus decades, which is customer service and support teams, they're dealing also on the front lines. Having them communicate and get information from development teams isn't always easy. And so both of us are really interested in kind of breaking down the walls between those organizations, but doing so in a way that's not interrupting those teams when they're doing their work that they have to right, do. Right. So one, that's what we wanted to accomplish. How can we share information seamlessly, automatically, so both teams are in sync, but they're not pestering each other. And then two, that work that's being done on the development side when something does go wrong in a DevOps world, now the customer support agents, the service agents, they can get ahead of those cases that are being opened up so they're not in the dark. They're not being flooded by tons of cases being opened up and they don't know what to say. They can right. ready their communications and push it out because they're in sync with they development. Got the data. So it's really interesting. You think pager duty and notifications, we're surrounded by all these dashboards and, and, and computer stuff. But you made a really interesting comment. It's all about the people. And you guys commissioned a study um, called, I'm going to read it, Unplanned Work, the Human Impact of an Always-On World. And, and really going after unplanned work. Now it's funny because everyone always talks about unplanned maintenance and unscheduled maintenance and the impacts on aircraft and the impacts on power generation and aircraft. I, this is the first time I've ever heard anyone couch it as, as unplanned, which is this completely disruptive force on people and their lives, not to mention their service workers, and according to the study, two thirds of them are pissed off and not too happy the way things are going at work anyway. What, what kind of was the zenith of that? And, and that's a really um, great way to reframe this problem into something much more human. The, 
the genesis of this all came from the concept that, you know, as, as you'll read a lot, we say we're always on. Let's keep it that way. Let's help. Let's help everyone keep it that way. It's a mantra with pager duty, um, and and it comes from again when I say genesis, it comes from even within our platform, we don't have maintenance windows. We are on 24/7, 360 days a year. We have to be up when other services aren't. And because of that, whenever we work with organizations or vendors that, that, that we pay for, and they say, we have a maintenance window, we're like, a maintenance window? My, my partner in crime who runs engineering, Tim Armanport, he always says, maintenance windows are for cars, not SaaS software. Like, there are no maintenance windows. And what that means as a first step is, if that's the case, there's no maintenance windows, you're always on, then you have to answer this question of like, how much time are you really spending in unplanned work, interruptions? Right. And so we really started taking that to heart. We really started to try to figure out what is the percentage? Everybody's trying to innovate more, that's planned work. Right. Is it 10%, is it 20%, is it 50%? The best organizations we see are 20 to 25% is unplanned work. 20 to 25% for the best organizations. Yeah, so it means wow. the not so best organizations right. are very different. Right. And so we feel that we uniquely can help organizations get way better at cutting down that time so that they can innovate more. Right. They're not firefighting, they're actually innovating and, and growing their businesses. Right. That's a big part of how we help people in these organizations do their job better. God, that's before you get into issues around context switching and, and, and pressure and disruption. And we, we found some amazing statistics. In, my, in a prior life, I ran engineering and it was at a SaaS company. And what I found was whenever customers, or whenever my top engineers would be put on call, we didn't have pager duty at the time, uh, and they would be on call and interrupted on consecutive nights in the middle of the night. The first I would typically hear about when somebody was burned out is when I would see a resignation letter on my desk. Or somebody, we know after two or three or four successive interruptions in someone's personal life, that goes on where they feel they're not being productive. One, they aren't productive at work either. Two, they're a huge retention risk. Right. So we have that kind of data, we can look at it, and we can help management and organizations help them and their teams take better care of their teams so that you know they're, they're being more humane. We call it humane ops, not human ops, humane right. ops. Right. Right. And, and how you deal with those most expensive precious resources in your company, which are your people, is really important. And they walk out the door every night, you know, so it's you got to take care of them so they come back the next day. It is, it Yes. Is. All right, Jonathan, last question as you, as we, uh, we, we're not quite done with, with Summit yet, but as we come to the close of Summit tomorrow, really busy year, the IPO, you guys have done amazing things, but as you kind of flip the calendar and look forward, what are some of your, you know, kind of priorities as, as, we, as we move forward? Yeah, so, uh, it's been a crazy year, uh, a lot of change, and um, I think a couple things going forward. One, uh, we're big partners with Amazon and AWS, uh, so we're attending reInvent. That's a big, big event for the company, uh, but also at this event, as I mentioned before, it's probably our biggest unveiling of new innovations and products for our entire 12,000 plus customers. So for us, it may seem like it's an end, it's really just the beginning right. because all of these products, intelligent triage, business response, intelligent dashboards, these products that are a part, these capabilities that are a part of our analytics and our events intelligence on the PagerDuty platform, we have to keep evolving this, we have to keep uh, kind of moving forward because the world is always on and we got to keep it that way. What, Andre just had a great line in his keynote about being scared as the uh, the generator of wisdom. But oh, here it is, right here. Fear is the beginning of wisdom. So not necessarily <laughs> fear, but fear of getting caught and keep moving, uh, we keep have ahead to keep of the innovating. pack. That's all right. right. Well, Jonathan, thanks for uh, for taking a few minutes and congratulations. I'm sure it's tough getting all those new babies out this week, but uh, what a great uh, what a great job. Thank you so much. All right, it's a pleasure. He's Jonathan. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at PagerDuty Summit in San Francisco. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.